Hey, bad news. You are not inherently attractive to women. No man is. We're not born with anything that women really want. I mean, I certainly wasn't. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? Sure, if you've got good looks, that might catch her attention for about five minutes. But if you want her to lock in and focus on you for the long term, then looks don't really help that much at all. It's all about the way you make her feel. One of the simplest ways you can make that girl feel good about you is to deploy what might be your most attractive masculine trait. This time we would need to deploy our immense patience. I'm bored! I'm bored! Bored. No, not that one. Good guess though. I'm talking about decisiveness. So let's see if there's some ways that we can upgrade our decisiveness. It's easy to get discouraged if you have trouble with this, but as Michael Neal puts it, there's no such thing as a decision. You either know what to do or you don't. Right, it's very Yoda-esque wisdom, but basically decisiveness isn't like some genetic trait that you either have it or you don't. It's all about what you know. And guys that are really quick and confident and firm with their decision making know a few things that the rest of us don't. So we're going to look at a few of those things. And plus, I'm going to put a bonus one on my Patreon because it might be a little bit too spicy for public YouTube. So let's dive in. The first thing that decisive guys know is their motivation. They know exactly what they want, and more than that, they're not afraid to go after it. Your audience contained what was left of the 107th. The rest were killed or captured. The 107th? What? Come on! Colonel Phillips, I need the casualty list from Mazzano. This might seem like it's obvious, but I'm always surprised by the number of guys I talk to who just don't know what they want in any context. They're perpetually in a state of asking other people to fill in the gaps for them. Like, I don't know, what do you want? What, what do you think I should do? Where do you think I should go? Or they do know what they want, but they're too afraid to go for it. They're taught that it's wrong to impose yourself or any of what you want onto other people. And then we wonder why guys are so passive and frozen and too scared to make a choice all the time. So the first way to get back to solid, confident decision-making is to ask that question. The very first question that Jesus asked, by the way, what is it that you want? Because let's be real, we are going to do what we want. That's not in question. Just disconnecting yourself from what you want is gonna just, you're, you're just not gonna know what to do. So that's not a useful solution. The question is about which wants are you following? Are they selfish and consuming or are they outward flowing and loving? Are you following that, that darkness, the, the selfishness living in your heart or are you following a desire to love other people and love God and make the world into a better place and have a meaningful impact on the world? And if you're worried about that sort of dark, consuming hunger in your heart taking over, just remember this quote, love God and do as you please. The next thing decisive guys know is who they are and who they're becoming. Remember your failure at the cave. But I've learned so much since then. Master Yoda, I promise to return and finish what I've begun. You have my word. Strong is Vader. Mind what you have learned. Save you again. I will. And I'll return. I promise. These guys can decide quickly, efficiently, confidently, because they know exactly who they are and what they're about and what matters to them. The problem is knowing who you are can actually be a liability if what you know about yourself is negative. Like if you have a really low view of yourself and your capabilities. And that's why you need to know more than just who you are. You need to know who you're becoming because that's the good news. You aren't stuck wherever you're at with this. You're always growing, learning, moving, developing yourself towards something. That's why you need a vision. You need a, a target to aim towards. Tony Stoltzfus defines vision as a God-given picture of an ideal future that captures your allegiance. And the most important piece of that future image is the person that you're becoming. And by the way, this is where the whole let go and let God mindset actually turns into a major problem. The whole Jesus take the we illustration is pretty terrible if you think about it because God does not actually take the wheel from us and make all of our choices for us. That's never a thing in scripture. What he expects of us is for us to take the wheel and then steer that car 
where he asks us to go. If you're not driving the car and then submitting it to God, someone else is going to grab the wheel. The world and other people all have agendas for you, places that they want to take you and things they want to use you for that probably don't fit with your vision or the vision that God wants to give to you. If you let go and just don't make decisions, someone else is going to fill in the gap and make them for you. And you might not end up in a place you want to be. The reason why God doesn't make all of our choices for us, he makes us decide things, is because our choices are what will shape us into the person that we're going to become. As C.S. Lewis puts it, that process is shaping us into the person that we're going to be in eternity. And the more you know about that person, the person that you're aiming at, the easier it is to make decisions that can steer you that direction. And again, that means knowing what your God-given vision for your life is. Okay, next thing. These guys know and accept that they will upset people. I never ordered no. any... No, don't even think about playing that game with me. I will not let you dishonor their memories by pretending you had nothing to do with it. How dare you come in here and lecture me? How dare you, sir? How dare you come into this office and bark at me like some little junkyard dog? I am the President of the United States. It gives me no pleasure to do it, sir. As acting deputy director of intelligence, it is my duty to report this matter to the Senate Oversight Committee. Sometimes we know who we are, what we want, what we like, and where we're headed and all of that, but we don't make the choice that we know is right because this is what we imagine is going to happen if we do. Confident decision makers know that they don't need anybody else's approval or appreciation even for what they're doing. These guys know their mission, they know their direction, and they know the, the decisions they need to make to get there, and they don't need people to like them all the time so they can weather the storm if people are upset with the decision they make. Once you disconnect from that need for approval or validation, you can start making decisions based on what will most likely bring about the best outcome instead of how people will feel about you. And that's a tough process, right? Becoming that person, letting go of that need for validation or approval I talk about that a lot on this channel. I'm going to talk about it more on over on Patreon. So yeah, consider joining up if you want. The next thing that these guys know and accept is that they can't control the outcome. If I'm the only one, then so be it. But I'm willing to bet I'm not. If you view life as like a system of machinery, you can really only control the inputs that you put into it. We can give the machine the best raw materials possible and make the best choices for the machine to work with, but we can't actually control what it spits out the other side. Because a lot of time, that's just dependent on other people or the government or market conditions or that or housing situations or whatever. It depends on things that are not entirely in our control. And a lot of time we spend a ton of effort and energy fretting about the output side. Man, am I going to get the exact results that I'm looking for in this situation? Is the machinery of life going to spit out the thing that I'm aiming at? But effective decision making isn't about controlling the outcome. It's about putting the best inputs into the situation you can and using your influence over your tiny little piece of the machinery as best as you're able to. And then from there, learning from what you get out of the machinery, right? Making adjustments based on what it gives you and then putting in better inputs next time. When you know that you can't control it, it's not going to be perfect. All you have to do is the best that you can with what you've been given. It takes away a lot of that perfectionism, that, that paralysis by analysis that we have. If we're following Jesus, we already have everything that we need. Anything better on top of that that we get is just a bonus, right? So it doesn't need to be perfect. Not here on this fallen, broken earth. It's going to be perfect in eternity anyway. The last thing they know is that everything is going to be okay. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo. The ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? But in the end, it's only a passing thing. The shadow. No matter what happens, no matter how things shake out in the end, no matter what the machinery of life spits out for you, in the end, it will be okay. That is trust. 
And trust is critical for decision making. And for some people, that means just a sort of blind faith in the universe, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me in a universe that appears to be trying to kill me all the time. For me, I trust that God has his hands on the machines of life. And I trust that he's good. The machines only spit out stuff that God has either directed them to or allowed them to. And whatever they put out, I know that he's going to take care of me through it. And then in the end, I'll get to spend the rest of eternity with him in a redeemed world with a redeemed body and a redeemed soul. And everything is going to be way better than it is now. You want to talk about taking the pressure off of decision making. That takes the pressure off. Trust that it's all going to be okay, no matter what. And one word of encouragement, it's important to remember decisive people are quick because they know all of these things so well that they don't have to think about it anymore. It's just a reflex for them. They've had time practicing these thoughts and these this mental patterns and approaches. And if you're not there, you're going to have to go through a period of time where you build that up. And that's not necessarily going to be quick. For a while, you will have to ask yourself, man, man, what do I want here? Like, what is my motivation, right? Do I accept the outcome of this? Do I care about other people's appealings? Why, why you know, do I actually trust God to take care of me? Things might actually go slower at first. You might feel more uncertain when you first start this process because you're now asking more questions that you weren't asking before. Eventually though, once you get in those habits and start repeating those practices over a long period of time, the changes will develop roots and work their way down to your core. And you'll start to see decision-making happen quicker and quicker. All that's say, if you're not seeing results immediately, that does not mean that you're doomed. It means you're in process and that's okay. What are your guys' thoughts? How have you guys been able to step up your decisiveness? Are there any other traits or characteristics that show confidence and make you more attractive? Let me know down in the comments. One-on-ones are available right now. Send me a message if you want to talk. That's all I got this time. Stay weird. Get out of here.